Hello everyone. So till now in multi-degree of freedom system, we have seen how to set up the equation of motion. Now the next step is to learn methods to solve those equations of motion to get the response of a multi-degree of freedom system. Uh, when we considered single degree of freedom system, we saw that there is only one way in which a single degree of freedom system can respond. However, a multi-degree of freedom system, which is made up of several degrees of freedom, can respond in multiple ways. And the total response actually is combination of different type of responses that the structure can uniquely respond in and we are going to look into that. So we are going to also learn about mode shapes which basically reflects or which basically describes one of the ways in which a structure can re reflect. And we are also going to learn about frequencies. Now a multi-degree of freedom system would have multiple frequencies. So we'll see that how to actually find out those frequencies. Okay. So let us get started. We have already studied how to set up the equation of motion of a multi-degree of freedom system. And we saw that now the forces are represented in terms of vectors and the displacement are represented in terms of vectors and there are mass matrices and stiffness matrices. So as against to a single degree of freedom system, okay, we set up the equation of motion for a multi-degree freedom system in terms of these forces, okay, and we saw that how we can get the mass matrix, the damping matrix, and the stiffness matrix as this. Let us see once we have obtained our equation of motion as this. Okay. How do we solve this equation of motion? Okay. Can we employ the same analytical solution that we have derived for single degree of freedom system to solve the multi degree of freedom system? Okay. And if we can, then how do we do that? Okay. So, first thing that we are going to talk about is basically free vibration. Okay, and let us con first consider undamped free vibration. So, my right, damping matrix is 0 and there is no external force. So, I am considering that 0. So, my equation of motion becomes mass times acceleration vector and then k times displacement vector to be equal to 0. Okay. All right. So, we are going to discuss about the solution of this equation. But to get into that, first we need to discuss some basic characteristic of vibration for a multi degree of freedom system. Okay. Now, we know that for a single degree of freedom system, let, let me say, let me just draw it here. Okay. I had only one degree of freedom u and there was only one possible way in which a single degree of freedom system could move. So by definition, I needed only one degree of freedom to represent the default position okay, with respect to its initial equilibrium position. However, let us consider okay, a two degree of freedom system, something like this. Okay, so the such that I'm going to consider different two degrees of freedom such that the total mass remains the same. Okay, however, the distribution is different a little bit. So let me draw in the first, let me draw the one degree of representation. This is the one degree of representation of a system. Now let us consider so there is only one way it can deflect, right? We saw that we only consider deflector deflection like this so if it's a deformable consider deflection like this okay so we know how it would deflect 
However, let us consider a system like this in which I have two masses, okay, which are joined first from the support to the first mass. I have consider the same stiffness where stiffness k and stiffness k. However, mass m1 and m2 and m1 is greater than much greater than m2 here. In the second case, though, let us consider a different representation. So, again, in this case, I have m1 m2 and in this case m1 is much smaller than m2 here okay and in the third case i am going to consider m1 and m2 which are comparable to each other okay as you can imagine physically if you look at it there are multiple ways or in this case if it's a two degree of freedom system okay there are two ways in which this structure or this system can deform. One would be simply like this. However, if this mass is very heavy, then it is likely that the movement of this mass is going to dictate the overall response. Okay. Now compare this to the second system that I have drawn here. In this case, if the mass M2 is much larger than mass M1, then the overall response is going to be dictated by the movement of mass m2 okay but in general reality lies somewhere in between where mass m1 and m2 are comparable and basically the deformation or relative deformation of both m1 and m2 actually going to dictate the overall response okay and for two degree of freedom system it can either respond like this or it can also respond like this. So there are only two ways in which this structure can deform in two dimension. Okay. So for multi degree of freedom system, okay, the total mass and the stiffness are not the only parameter. The distribution of mass and stiffness also plays a role. And we saw that for the distribution of mass here, I can do the same thing where I keep the masses same, but I consider different stiffnesses okay and in this case also you we can imagine that depending upon the stiffness between the masses and the support okay the overall response is going to change okay now in previous chapters we saw that we used to assume a deflected shape of a continuous system and utilize that which we call as a shape function and utilize that to reduce it to single degree of freedom system okay but that was an approximate method and we assume that that the deflected shape can be represented by static deflected shape or some other function however through the analysis of multi degree of freedom system okay we wish to find out what would be the exact deflected shapes of a multi degree of freedom system okay and to get that okay we are going to do or solve the equation of motion that we have just written here okay now so as you can imagine the total response of a multi degree of freedom system okay depends on the distribution of mass and the distribution of stiffness okay and it can deflect in multiple ways depending upon the number of degrees of freedom okay so the total response okay so let us say i have the total response as vector u can be written as linear combination of different deflected shapes Okay, so let us say this is phi 1. Okay, so I am using phi 1 to represent the deflected shape. This is similar to the shape vector that we had used in previous chapters. So, let us say I have a deflected shape 
which is something like this okay linearly increasing with height so if the height is h here and height is h then this deflected shape can be written as okay half and one where this is the first degree of freedom and this is the second degree of freedom similarly if i have a deflected shape okay which looks like something like this I can write my phi as let me say minus 1 and 1. All right. So these are some of the possible ways in which a system can deflect. Now, this is a two degree of freedom system. You could have multiple degree of freedom system. Okay. And there could be different shapes. So these are the possible ways in which a structure can deflect, but I still don't know that which deflected shape is going to be the close or going to be going to determine the overall response so what do we do we consider all deflected shape and we say that the total response is actually going to be sum of all such deflected shape okay a linear combination okay and these factors actually determine the relative contribution of each of these mode shapes to the overall response Okay, so this is how I imagine my multiple uh, response of a multiple degree of freedom system. And we are going to see how to find out these shapes exactly and how to find out these factors. Okay, so let us start with an example of a two degree of freedom system. Okay, let us say this is M1, M2, and this is K1, K2. Okay. And let us say it has been given some vibration, initial vibration. Okay. So it might be given some initial displacement. Okay. Uh, let us say it looks like something like this. All right. So this is the initial displacement at these two degrees of freedom. Now, if we give initial displacement to these two masses and then plot the resulting motion from these two masses we are going to see that okay, in general the motion of these masses are not harmonic okay similarly for this so this is u1 plotted against time and this is u2 plotted against time okay so if i give some initial displacement to a multi degree of freedom system and let it vibrate the response of each degree of freedom in general is not harmonic now compare that to single degree of freedom system in which when we provided initial condition u0 and u dot 0 we said that the resulting motion would be harmonic and it was given as u0 cos omega nt plus u dot 0 divided by omega n sin omega nt okay but that is not the case here okay so in general the resulting motion is not harmonic plus as these two masses m1 and m2 okay vibrates we will see that the structure or this uh, two degree of freedom six, uh, system here the shape of this two degree of freedom system is going to change with time okay so after some time it may look like something like this okay or it may also look like something like this okay so it, so the shape is actually going to change okay but okay there is a possible combination of initial displacement given to these degrees of freedom okay such that if this two degree of freedom system given initial displacement in such a fashion okay there exists a combination of u10 and u20 such that the resulting motion is actually going to be harmonic so let me redraw it with initial displacement this is going to be harmonic 
okay and u1 is also going to be harmonic okay so there exist few combinations okay such that if the motion is initiated by providing those initial displacement to each degree of freedom then the resulting motion of each degree of freedom is actually harmonic okay those combination of degrees of freedom or those combination of initial displacements are actually called characteristic shape or also called mode shape okay of a multi degree of freedom system now for two degree of freedom system we would have two such characteristic shapes or mode shapes such that if it's given the initial displacement okay with those proportions then it would have resulting motion at the degrees of freedom which would be harmonic in nature plus it would maintain its shape okay so for example this two degree of freedom system okay if i give initial displacement like this okay it is going to vibrate such that it maintains its shape okay so if you can look at here the relative okay at any time t the relative shape of the structure is not changing okay of course the overall amplitude is changing but the relative shape is not changing okay and if i have a n degree of freedom system then i would have n such characteristic shape for example this is the first type first characteristic shape or first mode shape okay second mode shape could be something like this okay i can have something like this then something like this and then so each of these the shape is actually not changing so this is second mode shape okay so let us just recap okay we said that in general if you initiate the motion the free vibration motion of a multi degree of freedom system by providing initial displacement to different degrees of freedom the resulting motion at each degree of freedom would not be harmonic and the structure is going to change its shape at each time instant okay however there exist few characteristic shape okay with which if the initial displacements are assigned proportional to those characteristic shape then the resulting motion is going to be harmonic plus the structure is going to maintain its shape okay those characteristic shapes are called mode shapes okay or uh, and a n degree of freedom system would have n such mode shape or characteristic shapes okay all right now we define for a single degree of freedom system the natural time period as 2 pi under root m by k the question comes how do we define or analytically we said that it is time taken to complete one cycle of motion okay for vibration now as i said in general the resulting motion motion here is not harmonic right so then how do we define this time period for a multi degree of freedom system okay so for a multi degree of freedom system the time period is not defined for the overall response but it is defined for each mode shape okay so the time period we define for each mode shape so let us say i have t1 here for the first mode shape and then t2 here is the second mode shape okay and t1 or let us say a natural time period of vibration natural time period of vibration is basically the time taken to complete one cycle of vibration in a particular mode 
okay so t1 t2 t3 like that for a multi degree of freedom system okay now as we have previously studied okay this relationship is still hold the tn would be 2 pi by omega n or frequency would be 1 by tn okay all right so we have defined or we have discussed that how a structure can deflect in multiple ways okay in general if we initiate the motion by providing initial displacement and velocity or whatever okay the resulting motion at each degree of freedom is not harmonic but there exist some shapes according to which if the structure is assigned initial deflection and allowed to undergo free vibration then in those cases the resulting motion would be harmonic and the structure would it maintain its shape while vibrating in those characteristic shape those are called mode shapes okay so as we have discussed the total response of a multi degree of freedom system can be represented as some linear combination of each mode shape okay so let us say i have n degree of freedom system so it would be some linear combination of first mode shape then second mode shape okay like that all right now the free vibration response of a multi degree of freedom system the total response ut okay in the nth mode let us say this is the nth mode can be written as the mode shape so i'm just considering one of these mode shapes okay let us consider the contribution of the nth mode shape to the total response by writing it as un of t and that would be equal to phi n the mode shape times the time variation q and t okay and that we have previously also discussed that if the deflected shape of a structure is represented through some shape function okay then the total response can be represented as a product of that shape function times some time variation function that represents the evolution in time okay now as we have said this phi n is actually constant in time it does not vary with time okay so the time variation is actually represented by q and t okay and this q and t okay as we have said that if it is vibrating in one of its mode shape the resulting motion would be harmonic okay so can i say that q and t can be written as an cos omega nt plus bn sin omega nt this is the general equation of motion for the vibration or general equation of motion for the harmonic vibration okay an cos omega nt plus bn sin omega nt and this is for the nth mode all right so the response contribution in the nth mode can be represented as shape factor for the nth mode or mode shape times q and t which we have written as an cos omega nt plus bn sin omega nt okay and our equation of motion for free vibration is this okay so what we are going to do here we are going to take this okay and substitute in this equation of motion now if i double differentiate this term here okay let us see what do we get okay so qn equal dot t would be basically equal to phi n times if this is differentiated twice it would be the same function times minus omega n square okay so i am going to write down minus omega n square times here and this becomes qn of t so i am going to substitute that here 
I get M N M as this, all right, times Q, which I am going to write this as, and phi n, and then Q N T plus K times U, which would again be phi n times Q N of T. Okay, and this can be further written as k matrix times phi n minus omega n square times m times phi n times q and t. Now, this equation tells us that either q and t can be equal to 0, okay, which means that there is no motion. Okay, and which is calls like you know trivial solution. So we are not bothered about that. Okay, we are the only thing that is going to give us meaningful solution in this one when we consider k phi n is equal to omega n square times mass matrix times phi n. Okay, if you look at this carefully, this is of the form a vector times a vector x is equal to some lambda times another vector b times x okay this is called eigenvalue problem okay and you may have come across this kind of problems in your advanced numerical methods course or mathematics course okay or matrix algebra course okay so this is basically eigenvalue problem Okay, now in this equation, my K matrix is known to me, my M matrix is known to me. Okay, so remember, if I have a like you know multi degree of freedom system, okay, something like let us say this K to K, I know how to get my K matrix, right? Which in this case would be simply 3K minus K minus K and K, and M would be. 2m 0 0 m we saw that how to get these matrices so in general if the structural properties are given my k matrix is known to me and my m matrix is known to me the unknown parameters are actually omega n square and the mode shape phi n okay and through this eigenvalue problem okay we are going to solve for these unknown parameters okay so basically let me rewrite that k minus omega n square m times phi n is equal to 0. Now, in this case, this would have a non trivial solution, okay, if this term here is equal to 0. So, this is like solution of and simultaneous equation of motion okay and because this is homogeneous okay one solution could be the phi n equal to 0 okay that is the trivial solution so for non trivial solution we need to have this equal to 0 or specifically not this actually but the determinant of the coefficient of the phi n vector okay is equal to 0. So, you can either write determinant of this or you can just use in this equal to 0. Okay. This is how we get the solution to an eigenvalue problem. Now, if let us say these are n homogeneous equation, then this would give me, okay, remember the constant here is omega n square, not omega n. So, this give me an algebraic equation okay of nth power of this constant here which would be omega n square okay to the nth power so it would have n roots which would be real and positive because my k matrix and n matrix are usually real and positive definite and symmetric okay so in that case i would have n roots here okay so, we can solve those type of equation of motion and we can find out the frequencies, okay, omega 1, omega 2, so on, okay, and typically we arrange it like 
omega smallest frequency first okay or if you want to write in terms of time period we'll have time period t1 t2 and we arrange it so the largest time period mode is first okay this is just a convention okay the first mode is also called the fundamental mode okay and once we have found out all these roots omega 1 omega 2 remember it will give you omega n square 1 omega n square 2 but then you can take the square root and find out omega n omega 2 and so on okay so once you get that you can substitute it back to this equation okay and you can find out the shape function phi 1 phi 2 okay or more specifically the mode shape here the shape vector phi 1 phi 2 and so on corresponding to each frequency okay and that through this procedure we can find out the exact mode shapes and frequency of a multi degree of freedom system okay and let us take one example to see how do we do that okay so i'm going to take example of just what we have seen above i have a two degree of freedom system with story stiffnesses as k 2k and k and this is 2m and m so the mass matrix i had assembled as 2m 0 0 m and the stiffness matrix i had assembled as 3k minus k minus k and k so let us see okay what are the modal frequencies and modal shapes for this two degree of freedom system so our equation was k minus omega n square m determinant of that is equal to 0 okay, so let us substitute that and see what do we get so i have here 3k okay and then minus k here minus k here and k here and this is omega s square times 2m 0 0 m here and the determinant of this whole thing so i basically get as 3k minus 2m omega square minus k here again have minus k here and k minus omega square m and this determinant to be equal to 0 so the equation that i get is 3k minus 2m omega square times k omega square m minus k square and this is equal to 0 so this would give me a quadratic in omega square okay and let us see what that equation is okay, so it would give me here 2 m omega 4 minus 5 k m omega square plus 2 k square equal to 0 so omega square is minus 5 k m plus minus 25 k square m square minus 16 k square m square divided by 4 m okay so basically omega square is this is 9 k m square here which under root would become plus minus 9 k m okay so what do we have here remember this is plus here because this is minus so 5 km plus minus 9 3 km when we take outside the root this will become 3 km divided by 4 m so first let us take the smaller frequency omega 1 square and it would be k by 2 m and omega 2 square is 2 k by m okay so omega 1 is k by 2 m and omega 2 is 2 k by m okay so we've got the two frequency of this two degree of freedom system once we have that let us substitute back in the equation 
the characteristic equation or not the characteristic equation but the eigen value equation k times pi n minus omega n square okay or i can write it simply like this k minus omega n square m okay times phi n is equal to 0 so let us first get the first mode shift so i can going to substitute omega 1 equal to k by 2m or omega 1 square equal to k by 2m once i substitute that let us see what do we get okay so basically i would have these expressions inside and uh, if i substitute omega square equal to k by 2m this would be simply 2k minus k minus k and then here k so it would be k by 2 this times phi 1 okay now phi 1 can be written as phi 1 1 and phi 2 1 which basically represents the coordinates at the degree of freedom 1 and coordinates at degree of freedom 2 for mode 1 so remember if you have phi j the i corresponds to degree of freedom and j corresponds to the mode and the same would be true for other response vectors as well like uij okay and so on so i have phi 1 1 and phi 2 1 equal to 0 okay so the equation basically i get is 2k phi 1 1 minus k phi 2 1 equal to 0 or minus k times phi 1 1 plus k by 2 times phi 2 1 is equal to 0. Now if you look at carefully both of these equations are one and the same. Okay. The second thing is you are going to notice. Okay. You can only get solution for this vector in terms of some multiplicative constant. Okay. For example, your phi 2 1 or let us say phi 1 1 is nothing but 1 by 2 phi 2 1. Okay. So here, because the homogeneous equation, it can have infinite, infinite solutions. Okay. So you can only get solution for these mode shapes, which are in terms of some multiplication factor. And that is okay because when we represent a shape factor or a mode shape, okay, these are always the relative location of each degree of freedom. Okay. So, what we do typically in these cases to get the mode shapes, okay, we normalize these mode shapes somehow, okay, such that we assume or we find out the individual elements of these mode shapes. So, one of the ways in which we can normalize and especially if it's a uh, representation of a multi-story building is that we can normalize it with respect to the top story degree of freedom. Okay, so let us say we assume it to be 1, which for phi 1, remember for phi 1, this quantity is phi 2 1 and this is phi 1 1. Okay, for phi 2, okay, again the same quantity would be phi 2 2 and phi 1 2 for the second mode. Okay, so let us first deal with the first mode. So, if I assume my phi 2 1 equal to 1, my phi 1 1 become half. So, my first mode shape I get as half and 1. Okay. Similarly, I can substitute my omega 2 square equal to 2k by m and we will see I can get my second mode shape as minus 1 and 1. Again, in the second mode shape, we are normalizing with respect to the second coordinate. So, this would look like something like this. The first, remember, this one is phi 1, 2. This one is phi 2, 2. So, first degree of freedom and the second degree of freedom. So, this is minus here. So, let us consider in this direction. And this is plus here. So, this would look like something like this. Okay. So, in both cases, I have normalized it with respect to the top story model coordinate.
okay and there are different ways in which you can normalize it you can normalize it with respect to in some specific degree of freedom okay or you can also normalize it with respect to some other method we will see that later okay so using this procedure we can get the mode shape and the frequencies of different modes of a multi degree of freedom system okay all right now remember here in a multi degree of freedom system we would be doing lot of matrix algebra okay and it would be very easy if we learn or if we employ some of the techniques and the properties of this mass matrices stiffness matrices mode shapes you know so that it becomes or it makes the job easier for us to solve some of the equation of motion okay so let us learn some of the specific properties and some special matrices that we would be using to actually analyze multi degree of freedom system using matrix algebra okay now remember for a n degree of freedom system i have said that i would have phi 1 phi 2 that represents the mode shapes okay of each mode corresponding to that i would have the frequency for each mode shape as well okay. what i can do i can combine all these okay mode shape vector remember right now each of them are a column vector i can write a mode shape matrix for which each column is actually one of the mode shape vector like this okay so the overall matrix is basically representing columns that are the mode shape of a n degree of freedom system okay and we also write this as phi jn okay just to represent okay this is called modal matrix okay modal matrix similarly i am going to define a diagonal matrix represented through this quantity here okay omega square in this each diagonal element is actually the frequencies of that individual mode and the off diagonal term are zero okay and remember i'm considering frequency square because my eigen value is actually frequency square okay the lambda in that eigen value equation is actually frequency square so i am going to define a matrix which for which the diagonal terms are the frequencies square of each mode shape and this is called spectral matrix okay now let us get back to our eigen value equation which was k times phi n is equal to omega n square times m times phi n okay or maybe we can write omega n square here okay. now this is the equation the eigen value equation for the nth mode okay we can combine all the modes together okay so remember this is for the nth mode if on n degree of freedom system i would have n such equations n such separate equations okay we can combine all those equation in a single equation okay so that i can write for all modes matrix k times not the mode shape phi n but the modal matrix phi n is equal to mass matrix times the modal matrix times the spectral matrix and this basically represents the same thing this represents this would have if you expand it n such characteristic equations okay for n degree of freedom system okay so this is just a compact way of writing all the 
characteristic equation the eigen equation eigen value problem for all the modes of a multi degree of freedom system okay all right now let us look at a very important property of the mode shapes which is going to help us immensely in solving the equation of motion for a multi degree of freedom system okay that property is called orthogonality of modes okay orthogonality of modes okay now the orthogonality of the modes states that okay the different modes okay different modes corresponding to different natural frequency okay so different modes let us say corresponding to different natural frequencies okay can be shown to satisfy the orthogonality condition which is basically if i take a mode shape n and take a transpose of that and multiply it with the mass matrix times the mode shape of another mode okay this would be equal to 0 and the same condition can be shown for the stiffness matrix as well that if i take a stiffness uh, if i take the mode shape transpose of a mode shape n multiply with the stiffness matrix times another mode shape again this would be equal to 0 okay and mathematically we can prove this okay let us see how we can do that remember that i can write for my nth mode okay for the nth mode i can write my eigen value equation as k times phi n okay equal to omega n square times m times phi n okay this is for the nth mode similarly for the rth mode which is a mode that is different from the nth mode i can write down a similar equation k times phi r is equal to omega r square m phi r okay not a matrix here it is a vector okay now what we can do here okay we can multiply okay any of these equation with the transpose of other mode so let me say uh let me multiply this with phi r transpose on both side of the equation okay so that i have omega n square phi r transpose and then okay here also i am going to multiply this phi n and omega r square phi r so our nth mode with the phi r to the power transpose and the rth mode phi n to the transpose on the both side of equation okay then i can take basically the transpose of one of the equation so let us say i take the transpose of this equation on the both side remember if a matrix is symmetric like m or k matrix if you take the transpose of this it would be same okay and if you take transpose of two matrix it would be transpose of the second matrix times the transpose of the first matrix so i'm going to employ these rules here okay so if i take transpose of the equation 1 i would get as phi n transpose times k times phi r is equal to omega n square okay times phi n transpose times n times phi r okay so let us say this is equation 2 and this is equation 3 so now if i take equation 2 minus equation 3 
okay these two quantities are same right and this can be written as omega r square minus omega n square times phi r equal t times m times phi r okay, sorry this is n here and this equal to 0 now we have said that these two are different modes so basically if omega r is not equal to omega n then this term would be here that would be equal to 0 so then phi n phi r is equal to 0 okay and this is basically the orthogonality condition okay now we have written this for mass matrix okay we can derive the same expression for the stiffness matrix as well just by writing this expression as phi and t and the mass times phi r would be k matrix times phi r divided by omega r square that would be equal to 0 so this would effectively become phi n k times phi r is equal to 0 as long as this condition is satisfied okay so this orthogonality condition is a very powerful basic conclusion that we utilize to solve our equation of motion we'll just see after discussing this okay now if these conditions are satisfied let us define okay two square matrices like this a square matrix k which is the stiffness matrix okay k it is defined as the shape factor or the modal matrix transpose times the stiffness matrix so this is capital k here okay times this now look at this quantity here and similarly we are going to define the capital mass matrix as well which is basically the product of phi t times mass matrix times phi okay now if you look at carefully here what do you have the modal matrix which i have previously written as each column vector is basically phi 1 each one of the modes phi 2 and then you have phi n here okay and then you have the stiffness matrix which would have term k11 okay k12 and so on k21 okay so on. so let us say just the general elements here and then phi okay here remember i have transpose here okay transpose here so this one is actually phi1 t not t here just write down the phi1 phi2 and so on phi n here okay now if i multiply these elements here what you will see that for any ith jth term what i will get as in this case so phi i of transpose times the matrix k this overall matrix okay times phi 1 phi j let us say here okay so this is any i f j th term now if it is a diagonal term then i can write it as phi i i and any off diagonal term i can write it as phi t k and phi j okay where i is not equal to j now if you look at carefully using orthogonality property this i and j wherever they would be different those terms would be equal to zero okay the non zero terms would only exist as long as the phi i and j would be both equal to let us say in this case i i so only the diagonal terms are going to exist here okay and those diagonal terms can be written as kn so if you consider the nth diagonal term okay the kn can be written as phi n transpose times k times phi n 
So this matrix is actually a diagonal matrix and the each element of this diagonal matrix can be represented as kn equal to mode shape transpose time k times the same mode shape. Similarly, for the mass matrix as well, I would get a diagonal matrix okay and the nth element of that diagonal matrix can be written as phi n transpose times the mass matrix times phi n and both these are obtained utilizing the condition of orthogonality of the mode shapes okay so kn is now known to me so the nth element of these diagonal matrices are now known to me and they are again related by the same expression kn is equal to omega n square n which you could easily obtain if you just substitute kn phi n is equal to omega n square mass n mass times phi n okay and then write the combine the terms and write it as mn okay so the diagonal terms of these matrices k and m are related using this equation right here okay so now the question comes okay why we are getting into all these diagonal matrices why do we need condition of orthogonality and everything okay so to explain that okay let us consider first a two degree of freedom system okay remember for single degree of freedom system the equation of motion was this cu dot plus k equal to 0 okay so this was a second order linear differential equation and i could directly solve it i had only one variable u okay and i needed to solve it u as a function of t okay but now if i have a two degree of freedom system like this let us say m11 m so basically now first let me write down the uh, equation in terms of matrices so m mass matrix times acceleration then let us say stiffness matrix times axle uh, dis uh, displacement vector is equal to zero in general i would have elements in the mass matrix as m11 m12 m21 m22 okay and this is u1 u2 similarly here k11 k12 k21 k22 okay and this as u1 and u2 and this equal to 0 so when when i write down it will give me two simultaneous equation right which is basically m11 times u1 double dot plus m12 times two double dot then k11 times u1 and k12 times u2 is equal to 0 similarly m21 times this acceleration and then m22 times the acceleration here k21 u1 plus k22 u2 the question is how do we solve these two differential equation okay these are two simultaneous differential equation and these are coupled okay the first equation has term in u1 u2 both and the same for the second so i cannot directly solve this differential equation okay had they been uncoupled differential equation then it would have been a lot easier for me to directly solve this in some terms of some parameter but that is not the case here okay but just imagine okay if i have diagonal matrices which only have diagonal element and then u1 u2 so let us say this is uh, m1 here and this is m2 okay and this is k1 here and this is k2 so no diagonal no off diagonal terms now if the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix are diagonal matrix then what do i basically get m1 u1 dot plus k1 u1 equal to 0 m2 u2 dot plus k2 u2 equal to 0 and now the equations are uncoupled right so if so this if i have an n degree of freedom system i get n coupled differential equations which are coupled through the mass matrix and stiffness matrix and if somehow i can 
diagonalize the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix then i can uncouple those equations of motions and then i can solve n differential equation individually like single degree of freedom system okay for which we already have standard results available okay and that is what we are trying to achieve by utilizing the condition of orthogonality of the mode shift and by you like you know constructing matrices in which the elements the mass and the stiffness elements are diagonal okay so although here it is not exactly u1 q1 because remember u1 is your phi times q1 okay so these becomes like you know a differential equation in terms of q1 but the idea is if you have mass and the stiffness matrix diagonal then i can get an uncoupled equation and i can solve the multi degree of freedom systems as n single degree of freedom systems and n differential equations okay and for which the analytical results are already available to me okay all right so with this i'm going to end this chapter here okay in next chapter we are going to see how to actually utilize the mode shapes okay and the frequencies to actually get the overall response of a multi degree of freedom system all right thank you very much